Hello, we're here with Paula Williams Madison at Chinese American Convention. Uh, hello, Paula. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And I was told that you are Chinese Jamaican American, right? I am. So um, tell us. Not Chinese oh, yeah. Jamaican. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell us your, your story, your background. Sure. So my grandfather came, he immigrated to Jamaica from uh, Lo Sui Hop in, near Shenzhen in China in 1905 when he was 15 years old. He went to Jamaica and became a, a merchant, a shopkeeper. Um, my grandmother uh, and he became uh, partners. My mother was born. His family sent to him from China uh, a Chinese woman to marry and they had more children. He ended up returning to China in 1933. Uh, he couldn't find my mother and so my mother never, she grew, lived with her father until she was three years old but then she never saw him again after that. So in 2012 I went off to find my Chinese grandfather's family in China. I found them. 300 of them lived between Hong Kong, Shenzhen and Guangzhou and we had a big reunion and so I've been going to visit my family three, four, five times a year ever since the year 2012. You know, when people are looking at you, they can hardly imagine you are, you are, you know, you got Chinese blood. So how do you see this, um, you know, connections? Actually, that you are the Asian American. Well, um, yeah, you can't necessarily look at me and see Chinese blood, but my mother looked Chinese. My mother's father was Chinese. Her mother was um, African Jamaican, but she looked Chinese. So we grew up here in Harlem, my two older brothers and I. I've always known I was Chinese mixed. Uh, many people didn't, and so what it has meant is that for me, I'm a um, first-generation American. My parents were born in Jamaica. That presents a certain type of experience. Um, the other experience is growing up and having people not know that you're Chinese too, and they may say things that are unkind about uh, Chinese or immigration, and so I have to then let them know that they're being discriminatory or unfair or but they should just stop saying some of the things that they said so it's made for a, an interesting experience i became a journalist i used to run um, some television stations for nbc i was a police commissioner in los angeles i owned the los angeles sparks a wnba team i've had a very varied career uh, and I retired in 2012 so that I could go find my grandfather's family in China. You have quite a you know, rich experience. So how, how do you how do you you know represent yourself in our community with multicultural background? Mm. Well, I, I did shoot a documentary that was produced and directed by my friend Jeanette Kong in 2014. It came out, and after that. It, the film is called Finding Samuel Lo, which we're going to show here tonight. Who is Samuel Lo? Samuel Lo is my grandfather. That's his Western name. His Chinese name is Lo Ting Chao. And, uh, and I wrote a book that was published by HarperCollins in 2015. It was translated into Chinese and published by Shenzhen Publishing. So I'm kind of known in certain circles as being that woman who's mixed race Chinese and looks, who looks black. So. How do I represent myself? I frequently get invited to events like this because it's important for Chinese Americans to know and understand that as more Chinese come to the United States, as they have second and third generation Chinese, that they are more likely to intermarry with other groups, whether they be Latino, whether they be Caucasian, whether they be uh, black. There's mixture in the Chinese community and Chinese need to expand their concept of who is Chinese American. Um, Jamaica is a good percentage of Jamaica that's Chinese. 20% of Cuba is mixed race Chinese. Very much of Peru and Panama and Trinidad and Tobago, Chinese are there too. And we are mixed race. So I think that it's important, especially as we're trying to form coalitions and get a power base in this country in order to have fair representation, Chinese Americans need to understand that um, Chinese people are going to look like me too. Absolutely. I think that's very important and uh, such a wonderful message from you. Thank so you. today you are at this conference and uh, for the whole day. And uh, how do you think about it? Well, I've been a member 
of UCA since it was started. So, you know, people kind of think, oh, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, I'm here because I joined. And sometimes I don't feel like telling them that I'm Chinese because I get such stupid responses like, oh, you drink tea? It, you know, you don't have to be Chinese to drink tea. But I think that this sort of monolithic view that some of us have about who is Chinese is keeping us apart. Um, the reason why I'm the only black Chinese person here, I think, is because as an organization, as a people, as a community, we have to expand and reach out to more mixed race people because guess what? We are growing in numbers faster than almost any other group in the United States. You probably found that actually, I, I feel that people, just the communication misunderstanding because the way that Chinese people are asking questions sometimes sounds uh, offensive, but doesn't really mean that, right? So communication is very important. I think that you are going to play a very important role in this organization. Um, you, you know, Haipei is a great friend of, of us, all of us. Haipei is a great yeah, man. Yeah, he's a great man. So I believe that you really you know, know him and agree with all the concept this organization. So what do you see, this year is a, you know, it's a great conference. What do you see this group going on? Uh, how do you see the Chinese Americans uh, in this country, the future in the next five or 10 years? Oh, I think that um, Chinese Americans in this country, not only will our numbers increase, but I think we will become more of a solidified community. Um, Chinese people are not all the same. As you know, you know, as I said, I'm Hakka, there's Punti, some people speak Choisanese, some people speak Hakkanese, some Shanghai. We're, we are so many different groups under the heading of Chinese, but some people in this country will see Chinese, Vietnamese, Koreans, Japanese as all, all Chinese, and, and, and we're not. And, and all Chinese are not the same. But we have to, when we're in this country, right, when we're in the United States of America, we have to maintain our histories and our cultures, but we also have to recognize that we're seen by some non-Chinese as one group. How much more political power and economic power we would have if we came together? And that's what UCA is trying to do. It's bringing together as a federation, different Chinese American associations under one umbrella so that what we can do is have a voice that speaks to diversity, a voice that, that addresses political strength and influence, uh, education, economic power. There are so many things that, quite frankly, we are coming from behind on because Beginning in 1882, we had the Chinese Exclusion Acts that were used against Chinese Americans. As a, as a black American, the whole history of slavery and what was done to Africans, there's so many similarities there that for me it's actually disappointing and painful that more Chinese and more blacks don't see that we have a more common history than not in this country and that if we would come together in a coalition, we would all benefit from it. Yeah, I think that uh, what makes this country great is the diversity. And uh, yeah, respect the difference. But we all have the common goal, like what you just mentioned. Right. Uh, so this show is called Innovation Dialogue. So what is innovation by your definition in one or two sentences? What is innovation? Yes. So for me, it's a new way of doing, a new way of thinking, a new way of being. So what we have to remember is that Chinese culture is steeped in history, the millennia going back for so long. My family's Japu goes back to the year 1006 BC. But still, you use that as a foundation, the history, the context, and then you innovate. What can we do that's new? What do we have in our, uh, in our abilities, in our experiences that we can bring to the table so that we have new, more exciting, more interesting, and I think more adventurous. So I'm all for innovating. I'm what's called a disruptor. Wow, it's great, disruptor. It's really my honor talking to you. Thank you, it's my Thank honor, you. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much.